Hello! In this video I'm going to show you how I built a more or less functional pendulum clock out of scrap parts I had lying around my studio and a few pieces that I bought from a pound shop. I actually had this idea while I was building my egg bot um, that I should try to build a clock out of pound shop parts. I kind of failed at that because I had to use a lot of mechanical scrap um, I had lying around as well. Uh, but there are a lot of clothes pegs in this build, so this is my clothes peg clock. It's very rare you actually see that word clothes peg written down. It looks kind of strange, it looks like cloth peg, but maybe that's just me. This was my first attempt at making an escapement wheel. I tried placing the clothes pegs manually uh, using some guides and jigs that I made to position the angle and diameter etc. When I tried to use that in a clock it turned out that wasn't really accurate enough. I used this piece of scrap kitchen work surface as the baseboard for my clock. I decided that was the best thing to do because I didn't really know where any of the cogs or gears etc would go and with this I could just drill into or secure things anywhere. I mounted a pair of skateboard bearings in pipe clips and ran a M8 threaded rod through them. And those are going to support the escapement axle. At this point I decided I needed some parts off the Eggbot build and I remembered exactly how strong hot glue really is. I was fairly ambitious with my first attempt at an escapement mechanism. This is my attempt at building a grasshopper escapement. I saw this in a video on YouTube and I thought it looked really fascinating and I wanted to give it a go. However, in practice it just wasn't accurate enough or reliable enough to impulse the pendulum and kind of hold the escapement wheel back. I was trying to use as little technology as possible but in the end I gave in and created these templates on SketchUp to help me place the clothes pegs more accurately. I created PDFs of those templates and I'll link to those in the description if I can be bothered or if people actually want those. That's my second attempt at an escapement wheel. That's the one I finally used. It has 30 teeth which means that each tick of the clock needs to take two seconds. Those skateboard bearings are really good. So this is my simpler escapement mechanism. It uses a M4 bolt with a straw around it to reduce friction clamped onto the pendulum and that hits the escapement wheel at exactly the right angle to impulse the pendulum. The second half of the escapement mechanism is the part which locks and then releases the escapement wheel. I'm not sure if there's a technical name for that. To keep things super simple, I made that pivot on the same axle as the pendulum. The part of that lock release mechanism that actually touches the escapement wheel is also made out of clothes pegs. That's to prevent excessive wear of the clothes peg teeth. Those clothes pegs that you can most easily see from this shot are the ones that actually stop the wheel from turning and there's a second pair glued on at an angle beneath those and that prevents the lock from swinging too far into the wheel. It just keeps the tips of those clothes pegs engaged. When the top of the pendulum pulls on that ribbon it causes the lock release mechanism to trigger and the length of that ribbon is very critical. It times the lock release mechanism to only release the escapement wheel when the bolt which impulses the pendulum is already touching it. 
that's my first attempt at running the clock under gravity power. There's just a drill tied onto some twine, and that twine is wrapped around a nut on the escapement axle. Next I started trying to synchronise the clock seconds with actual seconds. It turned out that I needed to extend the length of the pendulum considerably to make each swing take two seconds. I ended up with a pendulum about 120 centimetres long. Um, according to physics, it should have been about 90 centimetres, I think, but uh, as far as I'm concerned it works, so that's enough for me. I think the reason why my pendulum had to be so much longer is because the weight distribution made it definitely not an ideal pendulum. Uh, an ideal pendulum should have all the weight right on the very end, whereas mine was made of metal tubing, so probably the weight distribution shifted the centre of mass slightly upwards. I also had to put this very heavy hole punch on the end uh, to shift the centre of weight distribution a little bit further down uh, before it worked at all. So the escapement wheel rotates once every minute. Now I needed a way to count the minutes and create a wheel that would turn once every hour. So this wheel has 60 teeth. Ignore that smaller cog, I didn't use that in the end. Trying to keep it simple, first I tried to create a system that would turn that 60 tooth cog just using a small piece of pipe sticking out of the back of the escapement wheel. So the idea is that I would just engage with that cog once every minute and turn it one tooth. Not surprisingly, that wasn't really reliable enough. This was the minute counter that I finally used. It uses two stops on the 60 tooth wheel, which are triggered alternately by the escapement wheel. The stops are placed five and a half teeth away from each other. Because that's an incomplete number of teeth, only one stop is engaged at a time, so when it's raised it allows the wheel to move a little and then when the second stop is raised that first stop re-engages with the wheel. It reminds me in an obscure way of a kind of A-stable flip-flop sort of circuit in electronics. The big difference between this and a practical clock is that this wheel needs to be powered independently by another weight. The long chopstick things glued to the end of the stops on the minute counter engage with that little pipe on the escapement wheel and that triggers the stops one by one which allows the minute counter to advance. This is where I overstrike myself a little bit. I tried to create an hour counter wheel with 12 clothes pegs teeth um, that didn't quite work out. I think it was a combination of building up errors along this whole mechanism from the escapement to this cog, but also the fact that the diameter of the wheel was quite large, therefore a large space between the teeth, meant that the weight on there built up so much momentum the teeth kept getting smashed. While I was trying to get the hour counter right, I smashed a tooth off the minute counter as well, and then I decided to just call it quits and be happy with what I got. I just hot glued the tooth back on and uh, cut my losses. I wanted the clock to at least theoretically be able to run for two or three hours, so that meant that I needed to reduce the diameter of the axle that held the rope connected to the weights as much as possible, and also make full use of the whole height of the room I was in so that the weight would have as far as possible to drop so the rope could be as long as possible. So basically rope length equals run time of the clock. I needed to use quite a large weight because of course the smaller the diameter of the driving rod, the smaller proportion of its potential energy that weight is able to impart to the driving rod on each tick of the clock. To wind the clock I need to remove that little pipe that triggers the minute counter and hold back the escapement mechanism. That little pipe doubles as a winding handle.
I stuck some painter's tape on one of the clothes pegs and another piece to the backing board of the minute counter. So you can count the number of clothes pegs between the two pieces of tape to tell how many minutes have passed. It's not exactly a digital display, but this thing is made out of clothes pegs. Well, that's about it. I probably could have got the hour counter working if I'd spent a bit more time on it, but I was pulling my hair out and it just wasn't any fun anymore, so I decided to stop. Um, I think this project was kind of interesting because it's good to get used to not cutting things out on the laser cutter all the time, but I've got to feeling like I really want to build something accurate and uh, a bit easier to put together next. I plan to design a couple of laser cut clocks and possibly even start selling them on Etsy, so watch this space. They're going to look considerably prettier than this one, although that would not be difficult. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's a kind of ground upwards look at how pendulum clocks might work. If you did like it, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or not like this. I make videos about Arduinos, including the obligatory Arduino watering system. Um, I modified a Chinese laser cutter to run on G-code. I started using that to make laser cut market tree. I also made a blog about building my own CNC machine from scratch uh, using acrylic sheets and uh, the open build C-beam system. So there's a whole playlist which will kind of show you the process. And all of the designs for that CNC machine are available for you to download um, and you can make your own. I used that CNC machine to engrave some veneer to create a replica of the puzzle box from the Hellraiser series of films, uh, which was my entry for the Instructables Halloween contest this year. There's a lot of miscellaneous stuff on my channel, but if you're into maker stuff, you're probably going to find it interesting to subscribe. I'm really happy to have got past the 800 subscriber mark now. I think it's great that even more people are seeing my videos. I'm excited to see what the rest of 2017 is going to be like.